Hey guys, so what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Happy June. So you guys know it's June 1st, you know, what I have on the first of the month for you guys. I'm going to be doing... Oh, wow, that did not flow out the way I like it to. <laughs> I'm going to be doing my best and worst movies on Netflix. I didn't have the chance to watch too many movies and series. Um, I think I only have like five to mention, but I do talk a lot, so this video will be long. Uh, it will be lengthy, a little over ten minutes, but this month I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to try my best to watch a lot more movies, but I was just super busy handling my business and stuff like that. So without further ado, if you guys are interested in uh, hearing the best and worst movies of May, then please keep watching. Okay, so pulling out my list, I was only able to watch four movies and one series, which isn't bad. So um, every month Netflix will release like what's coming uh, that what's coming that month, like movies that are coming, and I think they also have a separate video with what's leaving, but um, when I watched the trailer for what's going to be coming in May, it looked like they had a lot of good movies, a lot of original series coming out, so I was really excited for this month. So the first movie I watched was Inconceivable with um, Nicolas Cage and Gina Gershaw, and those are very well-known actors. So the movie is about what the name is. The wife is inconceivable. Um, then they meet this woman through their trainer, and she runs like a little daycare for mommy and me type classes. And they let her friend, the, the trainer's friend, stay with them because she was super sweet. She was gonna move because she didn't have money. Blah blah blah. So the mom lets, um, well, the wife lets her stay with them. She already has a child of her own, um, but they did it through in vitro, so she stays with her, but she ends up being crazy, and there's so many twists and turns, and I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but it was really, really good. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, but like I said, she's crazy, and I don't want to ruin the plot and tell you the ending of it, but it's definitely worth it. And she ends up doing little things throughout the movie trying to make it seem like the wife is crazy because the wife used to abuse drugs because she suffered a miscarriage and she was going through depression and stuff like that. So she's nitpicking with the wife, making her look crazy to everyone else and the friends so they can be on her side and trying to turn everyone against the wife and get, you know, Nicolas Cage uh, character on her side and stuff. So it was a really crazy movie. It was very, very good. And I loved it. The plot twist was something you definitely didn't see coming. Like you think it's gonna end and you think that's it and then bam this major twist so it was really really good and I gave it a five out of five stars so the next movie I watched was the best freaking movie I've seen in a long time and it was called Anon with Clive Owen um, and Amanda Seyfried I love Amanda Seyfried Clive Owen Owen Clive Owen sorry is a very very good and well-known actor so it was just an amazing movie I have not seen a movie that good like it just held my attention the whole time and in between watching series and movies on Netflix like I'll have my phone by me so I can take notes and stuff so I make sure I hit it in the video but I didn't even want to grab for my phone like I was just so focused and so in tuned into this movie it was ridiculous. I loved it. So it takes place in the future where technology has evolved so much that you literally do everything in your brain, like such as unlocking the door, ordering food, and you can look and you can just look at someone and know exactly what they do for a living and you can go back and see their memories, like it'll pop up, look at someone, age, weight, this is their occupation, stuff like that, and then they have where someone can look back through your memories. And police use it to solve crimes, you know, murders and all that stuff. But, of course, it's technology, so there's hackers. So these hackers can hack into other people's memories and turn it so they stop recording or they delete footage and replace it with something else or it stops recording and it switched where they're just recording themselves, if that makes sense. So as the movie goes on, they're looking for a hacker that helps um, erase people's memories of cheating or drugs and then she ends up killing them after she gets paid so they think it's just another movie with a big twist that you don't see coming it was just so good guys it was very creative like like I said I've never seen a movie this good in a long time usually they're stupid or you can see the plot this was a really well made movie I I just loved it it was amazing I give it 15 out of 10 stars that's how good it was I highly highly recommend it Oh my gosh. The next movie I saw, which I loved, I don't have any eh or bad movies. I do have one bad movie, but usually I have like the good movies, the eh, and then the bad. So I only have one bad and then the rest are good. Like Netflix really hit it on with these new series that they released. So I watched Kissing Booth and it was so cute. It's just a cute little teen movie that I think anyone will enjoy. And it's about two best friends and they have these rules and you... Uh, can't fall for each other's siblings, obviously, but 
she ends up falling for her best friend's brother and he is a cutie so don't blame her and you know of course they're trying to hide it from him and sneak around and she's pretty much had a crush on the older brother all her life and just try to deny it and it turns out the older brother had a crush on her too and they're only a year apart they're juniors he's a senior and you know they're hiding it from him throughout the movie and stuff like that and then it all comes out and it was just a really cute and enjoyable movie I loved it I give it five out of five stars I've watched it twice um yeah by the time this goes up I have watched it twice because it was so good I liked it I like cute little sweet movies like that and I definitely recommend it. So the next series, I literally binge watched. I didn't even think I was going to like it. It was on uh, Trending Now. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. It's called Safe and it stars the guy that played Dexter. I never watched Dexter, so I don't know his name. But um, when it popped up, like, because you watched this, Dexter was part of it, like something for me to watch. And I was like, oh, that's the guy that plays in Safe. So he was a good actor. It takes place in England. And. Uh, he tries to do like a British accent throughout it. I hope he does it, but that's what it sounded like he was trying to do. And it was just horrible. And I know, like, I've watched a lot of interviews with British people and they say that Americans have the worst British accents. And it was so bad. So I, I see why they would say that. So, oh gosh, it was so cringy. But it takes place in England. So it's about this town and they are a gated community because there was a fire at a school a couple years ago, a couple de decades ago actually. So they're in this community because they never found out who lit the fire so they just felt unsafe. So they have this gated community and then in the first episode you see that I think his name is Tom. He's the main character. It's Tom and his two daughters. His wife just passed away from cancer and he's seeing the wife's old friend. Um, they're dating now so in that first episode the girl ends up disappearing and all the episodes are trying to find her of course and then leading up and then the secrets are revealed of everyone in the town and the one secret you did not see coming you think it's one person that did this but it turns out someone else because um they go to a party and her boyfriend gets into a fight and then he ends up dead in the pool. The host who had the party um, discovers him. He's in the pool so you think, oh she's missing, she must be dead. And then who killed him? They think she killed him. So it's this roller coaster and we find out secrets of the town. We see that she was, what she was up to, what she discovered and it's a pretty good twist. I hope they come back for season two because I really enjoyed the series. I binge watched it in two days and usually like I find a series and I'm like okay I'll watch it then I'll watch a movie just so I can make sure I include movies you know in here but that was such a binge worthy series. I loved it guys. I definitely recommend it. Five out of five stars. So the last um, movie I'll be talking about um, today is called Ibiza. It came out May 25th, so not that long ago, about a week ago, and I was really looking forward to see it. The trailer looked good. I couldn't even finish watching it. I think I got into 45 minutes, because the first time I tried to watch it, um, I wasn't really focused, and I wasn't really, like, paying attention that much, so I was like, alright, this seems really stupid. The acting is really bad, very cr uh, cringeworthy, and you could just tell what's gonna happen, so I was like, alright, you know what, I wasn't in the mood to watch Netflix anyway. I was tired, trying to force myself through it, so I'll come back to it. So I tried to watch it today, and I couldn't get through it. Like, the acting is just so bad. It's about this girl, uh, I believe she works in New York, her boss sends her on a trip to uh, Ibiza for a conference or something. They go to this party and the DJ calls her up and she hits it off the DJ and I guess the point of it is for her to find the DJ but it was so bad guys. Her, the main character, it wasn't that bad but her friends, the acting was just horrible. Like absolutely horrible. I'm not an actress. I could have did a better job acting. I would have took some acting classes and could have did a lot better. It was just so bad, so cringeworthy. I couldn't even take it anymore. So that's not even a one out of five stars. So um, I'm just letting you guys know if you don't like stupid movies like that, bad acting stuff, just skip over Ibiza was not a favorite of mine. Alright guys, so that is going to wrap up my best movies and series on uh, Netflix and May. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sure this video wasn't too long. Like I said, I didn't get a chance to watch too much Netflix this month. In June, I definitely will commit to watching a little more and um, squeezing some time in so I can come back with some more, you know, options for you guys and reviews. I hope you guys enjoyed. Also, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I had a lot of a lot more views on my 
my uh, La Casa de Papel and Best and Worst Netflix movies and series of April. I got like 58 views and it was only up for less than a month um, and there was a lot of likes on that so thank you guys. Please you know share this video so I can get way more views and some more likes and also comment down below. I definitely want to talk to you guys here. I don't get that many comments so I like to you know talk to you guys more and I've been on a roll with uploading videos so I'm just trying to keep this channel alive so definitely talk to me in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.